y'all, this is Jenny Gallagher for Designs by Juju. Today we are going to make this amazing reading pillow using some different skills than we've used before making our reading pillows. Couple of new things. One is we are using the absolutely stunning end to end all over quilting design for the um, stippling instead of what we did before. We are also using a binding that is actually the lining of your pocket pillow. Third new thing we're going to do is we are going to put a zipper in your pillow so you can easily take the pillow out so you can launder your case or swap out seasonally, whatever you want to do. But hang around a while and we're going to make this gorgeous pillow today. As you can see, I've already cut and prepped our fabric pieces for our reading pillow with a zipper back. This is our 18 by 18 inch front piece. It's a solid piece of this print. I have one piece of 11 by 18 as a front pocket. We're making this one a little different than the previous pillow tutorials I've done. So this is a piece of 13 by 18 pocket lining. It's the navy, but it is also the binding. And so it's one piece that we folded over to make a hem. So I have about a half inch and then the other inch and a quarter or so folded over. So I have approximately an inch and a quarter strip that will bind my pieces together once we make the pillow. Okay, so that's different. In the previous tutorial I made for Juju, um, this was in the previous tutorial I made for Juju, this piece was a separate decorative piece about three by 18 and the pillow back uh, pocket back was the same size as the front pocket it was just it could be the same or a different fabric but we're doing this one a little different okay we have two pieces of fabric cut for our back another different little thing we're going to do for this reading pillow we have two pieces cut nine and a half by 18 we're going to use a zipper to combine them. And then we have our 10 by 17 batting or fleece or whatever you're going to use to put between your front and lining of the pocket so that it looks a little quilted and plush and elegant. All right, so now let's get started. Okay, so a couple things I've done in preparation for our reading pillow is this is the back these are the two pieces you can see there they've been cut but i've pinned these two corners over here so i know where they're supposed to meet up i know this is the bottom half of this which is the top if your print doesn't really matter it's no big deal but if you look carefully these are mountains and flowers so i wouldn't want to sew my mountains upside down <laughs> So if you have a directional fabric, you want to pin or put a little mark, top, bottom, right, left, whatever, so that you will know that. I have also completely starched all my fabric. This is the product I use, Magic Sizing. I starch all my fabric before I start. And um, when we put these two together in just a little bit, We'll have this folded down and this folded down and we will combine them with the zipper so that you'll be able to take your pillow form in and out to be able to launder either piece or part um, as so desired. The other thing I've done is I have prepared the stitchable piece of the front pocket it's ironed and, and starched as well but i have also laid its fleece underneath i did use just a tad bit of adhesive spray 
so that uh, it keeps my measurements pretty even all the way around. It's a little crooked. There we go. So that it stays in place while I'm handling it and moving things around. I have marked center top and center bottom. Okay, and I find that by folding over, you can measure it and mark it as well. But you'll see the little purple mark is right there on our fold. And the little purple mark is right here on our fold. Okay, so now that tells me where I'm going to um, locate my centers. So because I'm working with such a small piece of fabric, I am going to start my edge to edge all over quilting design in the middle at the top. I'm going to fold to find center of my design. I'm using not the edges of my hoop. If your hoop happens to be differently shaped or sized, you could match up the ends of your stabilizer and they not match. I matched up my starting stitch and finishing stitch. And so they are matched up on the here to give me the center of my design. So then we open that up. I am going to use the edge of the fabric to match up to the edge of my hoop space so that I have room for my binding. Remember my blue, my navy binding is going to fold over and cover most of that up. Okay. So now I'm going to pin this in place. With just a couple of pins. And then we're going to slide our hoop stabilizer right underneath. So I'm going to place my hoop this direction using the screen I have pulled up my design and based on the, sh the orientation of my design this is the top right side of the design as it sits on the machine so we want it to go in the top right of our hoop if I'm upside down from y'all there we go so that way it matches the frame on my machine which is behind me and so that's why I turned it upside down. You can carry this next to your machine and lay it out exactly right. I have marked top left and top right on my fabric, on my hoop, on my template so that I know where it's going on my fabric. This is the top left of my reading pillow that comes across this way this is the right side but when you're talking about how the hoop goes on your machine it might be oriented differently so you may want to take all of this to the next to the machine so you can compare what it looks like on your screen to what it looks like here in your hoop and you want them to match exactly okay so now we're going to line up the center see the little purple mark in my fold we're going to line that up with our little tab on the hoop. I'm going to have my straight edge with my fabric. Um, we're a little bit off. We want the frame of the template to match the frame of the hoop. Pretty much right along all the edges. Okay. So once those are in place, we're going to take another pin and I'm going to put some counter pressure under the stabilizer so I'm not pushing down and moving my stabilizer out of alignment. You can use the edge of your table for this. That's what I normally do. I slide it over the edge of the table so that all of this has a firm surface to sit on. But my camera doesn't reach over there real well. So I've got two places pinned. So now I'm safe to remove this pin, fold the stabilizer template out of the way, 
put you a pin in there. Do the same thing on the other side. Remember when you're pinning not to push straight down, that puts too much pressure. If you'll just go at a little bit of an angle, you'll slide right through your fabric and your stabilizer very easily and put that counter pressure. Now we are able to remove these two pins and remove our template. Okay, So now we're going to put this on the machine and we're going to stitch our design. We're going to the stitch start, but it's going to start here and it's going to finish down here. Okay. All right, so we have quilted our first square, our first rectangle, five by seven rectangle. You can see the shadows. I'm using a thread color that's very close to my thread color of the fabric because on top of here when I get done I'm stitching a whole bunch of names. I've made a subway art design with all of the grandkids and great grandkids that belong to my mother-in-law and so it's going to be bright and colorful when I get done. So we're going to take the pins out and then we're going to fold everything back and we're going to trim our stabilizer away from our pocket. Just fold it right back. You can use scissors to do this. No matter the method you use, you just want to be really careful so you don't nip your fleece or batting. Okay, so we have that all done. This is what the back looks like. We have fleece and our stabilizer. You could actually, because these are quilting designs are actually beautiful on the front and the back. There's no real difference in the stitching whatsoever. You could create your whole pocket front and back together and do all of it on some water soluble stabilizer. So this is our first frame, all nice and stitched out. Um, if I hold it at the right angle, you can see all the cool little design features. There we go. There's a good, good view right there. So you can see how beautiful the ivy is. So next we are going to slip these out and put our template right here. We're going to use that in just a moment. We are going to take our rotary cutter and trim all around. You can use your scissors. You can trim this out whichever way you want. But just get all of the stabilizer trimmed. And then we're going to hoop another piece of cutaway. You could use water soluble stabilizer. You could use tear away. In our first reading pillow tutorial that I made for y'all, I did use tear away. Um, a few people wondered about laundering it. Um, so that would create a probably a little bit of a mess inside your um, quilted pocket pillow uh, pocket piece if you laundered it because the tear away is going to dissolve and probably crinkle up. So the, I decided we probably should use some cutaway for this. But you can use some um, tear away or water soluble, whichever you prefer. I made the template from cutaway as I mentioned before because we're going to be using it back and forth. So now we've got our stabilizer hooped for our next set. We're going to take our top left of the print and make sure it's on the left side of our fabric. And we're going to line up with 
where we want our next set of stitches to be to match where we were. Okay, so X marks the spot. So we've X'd that. We want to line up. Trying to get this folded nice and square for y'all. Okay, so then we're going to line that dot up there. And then we're going to line up the edge of the top of our stabilizer to the stop up to the top of our fabric. And we're going to pin this just like we did before in just a couple places to hold it straight and square. You could use tape for this. Um, that would be perfectly okay. Then we're going to lay our template and our fabric in the hoop the right way. Y'all caught me, didn't you? Okay, so we know the hooped edge goes over here and this design is on the right side of it in my software. I'll show y'all a picture of that. Okay, so now we have our hooped stabilizer underneath our fabric batting and our cutaway template. We're going to take a couple of pins and pin in place. We have our edge all the way around nice and straight. Okay, so all of that is in place. So now we can remove this pin and we'll replace it by pinning just under the hoop, uh, up under the template. And we'll do the same thing over here and the same thing over here. So we can remove our template. Okay. All right. So we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch this part. While this is stitching, keep in mind that your foot, the presser foot, might grab this right here. If you are not careful, this will be your machine can grab this. You'll see what I mean when um, I get to the machine. Okay, you can use your scissors to help you hold it down, preferably not your fingers. You can use a chopstick or um, your marking pen, anything to help secure this. You can tape it. I just don't like to have to pull the tape out of all the stitches, but you can do that. And I do that on a lot of projects. scissors or a chopstick or a pen but whatever you use you want to make sure you don't get it under that needle Alright, so we have our second square done, our second rectangle. Um, you can see the purple little lines, our little X marks the spot, marks where this set of stitches ended and this began. So this is perfectly met up. That's terrific. We're going to take this out of the stabilizer the same way we did before.
keep your fingers and your fabric out of the way. We're just going to cut that whole end off right there. And then we're going to move to our next set. Hoop our next piece of stabilizer. We want to always make sure our the top of the inner hoop lines up with the top of the outer hoop. If it doesn't, your centers and your edges will not be the same. All right, so we're going to match up our template again. We want the left side of our fabric and template to line up with this little dot because this is where it's going to start stitching. We're going to match them up right there. And then we're going to pin the template to the stable to the fabric in a couple places to keep it square and straight. And then we're going to place all of this on our hoop. Okay? So remember where the side of your machine, where the clamp, the where your machine connects to your hoop. Okay, and for me, my machine lays this way. So this is exactly the same way as it's going to go from here to the machine, just exactly like this. Okay, and this is the corner, this is a print piece of the pattern that goes in this corner when you lay this down. Okay, so yes, it seems upside down to y'all, but that's the way it moves to my machine. So you always want to double check, triple check your orientation. I have sewn things upside down and backwards just because I did not double or triple check the orientation of my design. If it's easier for you to do that part next to your machine, do that. Okay, but now we have edges. I'm pressing my nail into the edge of the hoop to make sure I'm straight, we're straight, we're straight, we're straight. So that means that our stitches should be right. So we're going to take some more pins. And secure the template to the stabilizer. Oops, that shifted a little bit. It is not straight now. There we go. Okay, so we're going to just take these pins out and replace them under the template. So we'll be able to remove the template completely. Okay, template's gone. Now we're going to put this on the machine. Okay. I'm going to try to show you a trick on how to make sure this stitch is exactly where we want it. All right, so now we have our project on the machine. We are going to go over to our screen. I want to advance one, my machine will let me go the whole frame, 100 stitches at a time. 10 stitches at a time or even one backwards or forwards and so this makes things really convenient when you're trying to position something so we're going to lower the presser foot and we're going to advance one stitch that's going to take us exactly to where we want our stitch to begin i'm going to raise the foot so we can actually see i'm going to drop the needle but see how we're not quite matched up? That can happen a lot of times when you're doing projects where you want it to be exact. So we're gonna go to our screen. 
I'm going to back out of embroidery and I'm going to use my moving tool to move my needle toward me. I want it to come down just a little bit. So I'm going to use this part of my down. I was about a quarter inch off. So I'm using my number. See the numbers at the top? I'm going to get close to a quarter inch. And then we're going to drop our needle again. Okay. Let's see if we can get up in there. We have finished the whole first row of our pocket pillow quilting design. We're going to take this out of the hoop the same way we did before. Just trim that edge right off. It's going to be all enclosed in your seam allowance. Scissors or a rotary tool will be fine to get this trimmed out. Just keep your fingers out of the way and don't cut your beautiful fabric. Okay, so we're going to continue this process and move right down here. This time, just to show you it can work either direction, we're going to start um, with our design going across from the left. Instead of centering it, we're going to start from the left and work our way straight across, which is the easiest way because then you don't have to try to match up both ends every time. If you start on one side and work your way across, you only have to find one end. So we're going to do this a little differently. It means that your, um, your um, stitching is going to be a little bit different because now we're going to have what was this edge over here, right here on this edge. So it helps make it more random looking. Okay, we're going to hoop some more stabilizer and we want to make sure we have the top of the inner aligned with the top of the outer hoop. Innies and outies here guys. All right, so we're going to take our template. We're going to decide how far down we want this row of stitching to be from this row. And since most of these vary, you could pretty much pick any of them and it would look okay. If you pick the edge of your hoop space, you're going to wind up with a large gap unstitched. That's not going to look very good. You want to make sure you're aligning to these stitches, not your hoop frame. Okay. So we're going to fold it over so we can see. We want to make sure that's pretty square. We want to make sure the edges are straight and that we're not doing this kind of business here. Okay, so make sure it's a little bit straight. You can put a ruler on it if you want. But how close do you want those stitches to be? So those look like similar distances as in our stitching. So somewhere about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch would be fine. We want to make sure that not only do we look square across the top, but we want to double check our frame at the bottom and make sure we're pretty square there. If your fabric isn't cut square, you can't use straight edges from your fabric. Okay, then we want to double check the end. How far over do we want this stitch? We can scoot it way over so it catches inside the seam allowance, which is what I'm going to do. So 
so it literally looks like it's floating off into the seam. Or you could move it over just a little bit so that it is visible and not caught in your seam allowance. Your creativity is the only limit to what this is going to look like. Okay, so then we're going to take our hoop. Remember we have our top left to the top left of our um, pocket pillow, but then on the machine we want to make sure the design still matches what we want it to look like. And so this is our leaf that I'm using in my mind to help me keep things oriented properly. This is going to attach to the machine on this side, so this is the top corner of my design. Okay? All right. So we're going to line our template up with the edges of your hoop. And just press your nail or your finger down into the edge of your frame and make sure you line up. Make sure all of your lines are straight and then you can shoot you a pin or two to hold it in place. Okay. If you're picking up and shifting your hoop around, you want to double check your placement every time between lifting and moving. Okay, so that gives us two pins to keep us square. We're going to take some of the pins out of the template stabilizer and put them down below. Okay. One more pin right here. And then we'll be good to go to the machine. Okay. So this time we don't have anything we need to align so we're just going to stitch this out and we'll be right back. Okay, we have our fourth set of quilting stitches on our pocket. X marks the spot. This is where our stitching ended. So we're going to match that to our new block of stitching. Isn't that beautiful? Another layer of stabilizer ready for work. Nice and tight. All right, so now we're going to take our template once again. We are going to find the top left corner. We've marked it or pinned it, and we're going to find the dot where that stitch is going to start for the new set of quilting. We're going to match the dot up to X marks the spot. We're going to make sure our stitching is going to come close but not overlap the set of stitches from above. And we're going to pin this in place.
you could, if you wanted to get really creative, you could take different size designs and mix and match them if your machine has that capability. So for instance, if you had a six by 10 frame, you could start your six by 10 and do it and then do four by fours on the side. Um, you could do five by sevens. You could do some of your designs horizontal and some of them vertical. Just mix and match however challenging you want this to be. Um, you can have a lot of fun with moving these designs around. Okay. So we're going to lay our, our stabilizer and our fabric inside the hoop. We're going to match up edges of the hoop to the edges of our template. It's a little bit crooked. There we go. Now we have straighter lines. Okay. The more stitching you get on here, the stiffer this becomes. That makes it a little more challenging to work with. So be really careful double and triple checking your placement often. Notice all of my pins are pinned in the hoop area, but not in stitchable area, okay? So then we can take that one out. We'll take this one and replace it. So this end has stabilization. Making sure we're straight before I get all the pins out. And then we can take this one out. So we have a pin on both ends. That should hold us till we get some stitching going. All right, so we have done our second row, our set first set of stitches and our second set. So we're left with just a little bitty square over here on the end. So we'll do that next. And then we'll start putting our reading pillow together. we have top left, top right. We started here. We did three sections up here starting in the center and moving outward. And this row we started in the bottom and we're moving straight across. But see what the difference in um, the shadows and stitching. There you go. You can see it a little better that way. Okay. So see how more random that looks because instead of it all lining up perfectly under each other, now it's a little more spread out. Here's this loop, here's this loop. Here's a, here's a, a leaf coming to point to this leaf. Um, so it just changes the look just a, a tad. So you can play with placement however you like. So now we have our entire reading pillow quilted. We have a band at the top that's not quilted because we're going to stitch there. We have a little space at the bottom. We don't need that really quilted either. That's fine. And then we have quilted all the way edge to edge like we said we would. So there's two rows. We started here. We did both of those um, centered. And then the second row, we just did continuous all the way across. So here's where X marks the spot, where you see the stitches lined right up on all of the blocks. 
and so it looks continuous which is pretty amazing I'm pretty stoked y'all all right so we're gonna cut this out and then we're going to um, put I'm gonna stitch my design I have some subway art that's going on here I have a whole bunch of names It's going on here in a subway art form and so um, I'm going to show you how I centered that all right so we have ironed under about a half inch for our seam to be able to attach our zipper okay so we have this capability we're going to line up the edge of our fabrics to each other along the zipper's edge this will keep most of the zipper pretty hidden you do want to um, make sure you account for your side seam over here so we want to leave at least a half inch beyond the end of the zipper okay so make sure you account for that when you're stitching and pinning so we're going to line that up we're going to I'm going to start with the bottom I'm going to use the center of my zipper as my straight line to go by. So I'm just going to pin in a few places. So that it stays straight. Now, I will tell you a secret. This particular zipper, I actually bought for a jacket that I never made. So it actually comes apart down here. So you could go ahead and pin this particular one to the other piece. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it as one zipper so I can show you how to get it best aligned. If you separate it, you do run the risk of it not lining up perfectly when you get done. But it sure makes things easy if you can separate it. But now we have the bottom pinned. And I'm going to pin the top. I'm going to run these to the machine on the sewing machine and run these together. And then we'll move right on and build our pillow. All right, so here we are at the machine. We are going to run down the edge of both sides of the zipper. You'll notice that I have my zipper foot on the machine it's actually a very old zipper foot it actually belonged to my mama when she sewed 30 or 40 50 years ago so now I'm at the end but I want to make sure and stitch really well um, across the zipper in addition to the seam that will be there so I'm just going to turn 90 degrees and I'm going to carefully stitch right over top of my vinyl zipper go very slowly I'm 
until you get a nice secure row of stitches. So we'll take a closer look. Okay, so we have seams down both sides of the zipper and across the very end so that once we put our seam here this will act as super security and we'll be able to cut the rest of our tail of the zipper off. The other end, a close-up view, we have plenty of room to secure our fabric this way in our seam and that will be able that way we'll be able to open our um, pillow for washing the form or not washing the form and washing the covers okay so very cool all right so now I've switched to my 6x10 hoop because my pillow pocket is going to have names all over this in subway form they're just everywhere so I have some markings on my stabilizer on my pocket pillow and where I start with center my design is actually in two pieces because I don't have a hoop large enough my entire subway art design is 14 inches long my hoop only goes to 10 so I've divided my design into a 6 by 10 and a 6 by 3 ish and I will have to hoop again to get them all done but I need the first hooping of 6 by 10 to go on this part of the design the little piece is going to stitch on this far right side right here okay so we're going to stitch the big part first I have the outer edges of my 14 inches here once I find center I divide my design in half so I, I'm, I need to come to about seven inches on the right and I need to go to about seven inches on the left okay so I have marked top and bottom so that I can keep my line straight and know where everything's gonna stitch okay so I'm gonna fold over this edge and match up my fold to my purple marks okay so that's a purple mark and that's a purple mark and that is going to line up with the edges of my stitchable area inside my 6x10 hoop. I've marked those with the blue marker. You find that by putting your hoop stabilizer on the machine and just stitch a basting stitch around it and then you can mark your hoop so you always know where your outer edges are going to be. Okay, so we're going to approximately center our design. The stop this um, when if you remember from the previous video when we did the pocket pillow, I moved the design about an inch to allow for the bend of the bottom of the pillow, how it curves under. So I'm kind of doing that here, although it's not a whole inch because I'm using so much of the space. So I have a smaller section on this side of my design and a little bit longer piece down here at the bottom. This is the top of my pillow. This is the bottom of my pillow. This is the left edge. So I'm just going to line up these two marks and we're going to fold that over and I'm going to pin this in place very carefully. We don't want this coming out of alignment. Oops, it got my finger, not my fabric. Okay, we're gonna to come to the other end, moving everything very carefully. Okay. We're gonna, we can fold over a little bit and make sure that we're in alignment. If you can keep this square, you'll see our, our purple line matches our blue line. Okay, so because this is already kind of stiff it's, and it's flat, it's not going anywhere. So that's all the pinning that I'm really going to do. Okay, 
Now we're going to go stitch our subway art and then we'll be back to put our pillow together. So we have finished the first 6 by 10 area and now we are placing um, the um, pillow pocket um, on the hoop stabilizer for the 3 by 6 remaining names that need to go here. You can see the stitches are all here. Okay. I have measured, I've sort of drawn lines. I used my long ruler to get the upper edges to be really close to my new set of stitches. The good, the good news is it's not perfect. So some letters are taller and shorter than others. So even if my top alignment is off just a tiny bit, it's not going to be that noticeable. But I have used my straight edge to find the approximate placement for where the stitching should be on this edge right here. I did the same thing for the bottom row of stitches. These are also not exactly on the same plane. So that gives us some room to, to work a little bit. You'll see this word is closer to the stitches. This S is really close. Okay. And so even if we're off just a little, because of how I laid my subway art out, it's not vital that it be perfectly in alignment. But it's going to be really close. And I'm going to show you how we're going to test that here in just a moment. Okay, so remember the outside edge was seven inches here. So this is the furthest we need to go with our stitching. And it looks like we have almost four inches to there. So it'll be perfectly fine if it doesn't go that far. Okay, so we're going to take this to the machine and um, run our placement um, square so that we see where it is actually aligned. Okay. So now we have attached our backing and our binding to the front of the pocket pillow. Okay, so now we're ready to put the finish, um, the front of the whole pocket, of the whole pillow, excuse me, um, attached to the pocket. So I'm just going to take some pins and pin a few places all the way around so it stays secure. If you notice, the pocket is seems a little shorter. Remember when we cut our fabric in the very beginning, they were all the same size, but all the stitching does tend to pull your fabric in a little bit, especially when it's all these fonts, because there's tons of tiny stitches. We're just going to put a couple of pins and then I'm going to the machine and I'm going to baste around the, these edges to hold this tight and comfortable um, in place. 
so that it's not shifting around while we put the back on. Okay? Look, y'all, our pillow is almost done. Look how pretty it is coming together. The colors of the thread are um, taken from the colors, most of them, in, in the fabric. But now we're going to take our zippered back. Remember we did that in an earlier step. We're going to take our one solid piece of fabric now that we have our zipper in it. We're going to pin this in place just like we did when we pinned the pocket to the front. We're going to take this to the machine and stitch all the way around. I'm going to leave a little opening, probably three or four inches. Um, so uh, we, oh, we don't have to leave an opening, y'all. I'll just be able to slide my zipper. Look. Oh, how cool is that? So we'll just do our zipper opening. That'll be awesome. The very first time we get to use our zipper is to turn our pillow right side out. Okay, y'all. So do pay attention. This is one thing you want to pay really close attention to. You want to make sure that your zipper is um, laid in, not out. Okay? You don't want the zipper handle being caught in your stitches. That'll break your needle. You want to make sure that the zipper piece is far enough inside, well away from your stitching of your seam allowance. So what I'm going to do, because we, I want to use my zipper to turn, I don't have to leave an opening now. Okay, I'm going to pin both sides in place. So I can carefully run my stitches here. Now I want to move my zipper handle out of the way. So I'm going to reach under here and hold the zipper with my left hand and pull it open so it's well away from the stitch area. But my zipper pieces aren't going to shift and move out of place. I've got everything pinned together right there. I'm going to put a couple other pins with it all nice and flat. So that it doesn't shift when it's going through the machine. All right. So our last set of stitches is to go all the way around. I'm using about a half inch seam allowance for the majority of these stitches. So you can see our seams on the reverse um, side. You can see where I have my two rows of stitching for my basting. Look real close and you'll see how I did extra tacking and stitching back and forth, reversing my stitches, because this is where the zipper is going to come to. And so this is this part of your seam will get a lot of stress. So now it has multiple layers to provide support so that it won't be likely to give way. So we're going to take our rotary cutter and trim all the corners. You always want to trim corners. Otherwise, you're going to have rounded corners and not pretty pointed corners. So cut really close, but be real careful not to cut your stitching. And then we're going to turn our pillow. Aren't y'all excited? I can't wait to see it. Okay. All right. So now we have our opening. We're just going to reach right in here and open our pillow. We're going to go to each corner with our fingernails 
or chopstick. Um, you can use a pencil to reach in, whatever turning tool you prefer. I just use my fingernails. I grab it right at the corner with fingernail and thumbnail, and then I get a sharp corner. If you want it sharper, you can iron it um, once you get it pricked out. Um, the thicker fleece lined bottom may need a little persuasion. So just reach a pin in and gently wiggle your corner right out. And there we go. And our last corner. Going to flip right out. Look at there. Almost perfect. Don't jerk any loose threads. Always trim your loose threads. And y'all, this is our pocket pillow with a zipper. Isn't that awesome? Yay! Look what we did! Woohoo! Go Designs by Juju! This is Jenny Gallagher. Have fun making more reading pillows.